how do you create this bench worthy content? What does your business currently have in terms of content that you can actually use for your prospect to be busy for seven hours? So there's a couple of different things you can consider. So you can produce a podcast. Um, you can do live streams. Another option is you can create long form YouTube, YouTube videos. And of course, we got tons of content on this channel where you can literally watch for hours and hours and hours. So Google has this rule called the 7-11-4 rule. And if you follow it, it's going to be the key to you enrolling more high ticket clients um, for your coaching business or your coaching, your consulting, your professional service based business, whatever type of business you, you have and you want to get more clients and you sell via the phone or on your events or whatever the case may be, it's going to be extremely valuable um, for you, whether that's coaching, consulting, you're an attorney, you're a fitness trainer, um, you, you're a caterer. Uh, Body sculpting, mad spa, doesn't matter. It's going to be very, very valuable for you. Now, before I get into it, who am I? I'm Marco Russell. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Client Attraction University. And our company is the go-to resource for the top coaches, consultants, experts, influencers, service providers who want to make their market more profitable so they can actually grow and scale consistently and predictably. So let's talk about the Google 7 11 4 rule here just for a second. So basically what they're saying is that a consumer needs seven hours of engagement across 11 touch points in four different locations, right? And you can get this document. I have a link in the description section where you can get this document so you can print it out and all that good stuff if you want, okay? So this is according to research done by Google on the buying behavior of digital consumers. So I wanna break this whole thing down. So let's break this down a little bit, beginning with the seven hours of engagement. So you need to be engageable at least for seven hours. So I don't know if you ever had somebody come to a call and they were like, man, I've been binge watching your content. Well, in order, the first thing you got to have in place for someone to binge watch your content is for you to have content that's binge watchable, right? Very, very important. Uh, so how do you do that? Um, how do you create this binge worthy content? So what is your business? So what? So think about it right now. What does your business currently have in terms of content um, that you can actually use um, for your prospect to be busy for seven hours? So there's a couple of different things you can consider because uh, most business owners, they don't have any of this type of stuff. And even when I talk to them about having this type of stuff, they're like, they look at me like uh, a deer stuck in headlights, right? So let's break this down a little bit. What are some different options you can have? Um, so you can produce a podcast. That's one option. Um, you can do live streams. That's another option. Another option is you can create long form YouTube, YouTube videos similar to this one that I'm creating right here for you. It's not going to be an hour or anywhere close to seven hours. Um, but this is an example. Right. And of course, we got tons of content um, on this page where on this channel where you can literally watch for hours and hours and hours. Um, so those are just a few. Those are just like three just off the top of my head. Of course, I can go on and on and on. It's going to also be multi-day events. Multi-day events work phenomenally, and that's why multi-day events, um, one of the reasons multi-day events work so well also. So all of these long form options, they can actually be broken up and turned into multiple, like dozens of pieces of content or even hundreds of pieces of content. Like you can literally take one podcast episode and you can turn it into hundreds of pieces of content depending on how it's structured, okay? Now let's talk about the 11 touch points. So now they're going to consume, they're not going to consume uh, seven hours of content in one sitting. Well, most won't. Some will, but most won't. So this means you need to create the ability for them to back, you know, kind of get back around, touch other places and all that good stuff to consume your stuff in other different platforms. So you want to create an ecosystem where they can actually do this. Right. And this, this ecosystem is designed to nurture them through the process. So what are some of the ways that you can actually implement these 11 touch points? So you got social media profiles, you got um, channels like YouTube channels or whatever different channels you're on. You got Facebook group, you got email newsletters, you got omnipresence retargeting campaigns, you got follow up sequences, you got text marketing, you got live and virtual events and the list goes on and on and on. So lastly, Let's talk about the four separate locations. So a location in this particular context is in a digital location. This doesn't mean necessarily an in-person physical location. OK, uh, so you want to meet individuals where they are. They're not necessarily going to just engage with you on one platform. They're going to be all over the place. Uh, in fact, based on Google is actually to your advantage to be all over the place as well as they're moving around. So this means you want to again create an ecosystem. That word again is very, very important so you can diversify your digital asset. So this means um, leveraging these different touch points. So maybe you're on LinkedIn. You don't got to be on all different platforms, but I recommend probably at least being on two. I used to say just focus on one, but I recommend probably at least be on two, especially because a lot of these social media platforms are AI driven now. And so you can get your account shut down by mistake just because something happened with their AI. So you want to be leveraging that, okay? So just because they found you on Facebook doesn't mean they won't, don't want to consume your stuff on YouTube or LinkedIn or Instagram or whatever. You don't have to be on all of them, but um, you want to consider this, okay? 
Um, so, so, so now they see your social. Now they go to your website. Now you can retarget. You can you can pixel them. So now you can start showing them ads all on different platforms. Uh, have them on your pod- podcast, whatever the case may be. Right? You can run ads on different podcasts. There's a lot of different ways to go about doing this. Diversification increases familiarity. Uh, with you outside of just one solo channel So they're kind of seeing you all over the place And they're like oh my god this person's all over the place They must be the real deal So that's the the, uh, the frequency right And you being top of mind So the 7 11 rule isn't like some kind of marketing tactic Or some type of hack It's a full blown strategy Back with solid principles Based on a study of consumer behavior Now and it requires you again To create an entire ecosystem Right it's not enough to just run an ad And be done with it It's not enough to just create a piece of content You want to create a, you want to create a full blown um, Ecosystem to do this And if you think about it If you think about it Okay if you don't believe this works If you think about it for yourself And you think about some of the brands That you do business with And you pay premium prices it's probably the same thing. You probably follow their socials. You may be on their email list. You probably get texts from them. Uh, you may have gone to their events. All these different things. Or they may consume their podcast. And it's literally uh, the same scenario. But this is just a real, real deep breakdown of it. So let me ask you this. Do you currently um, have the infrastructure necessary to implement the 7-11-4 right, strategy? If you don't. Well, if you do, first and foremost, um, what advice would you give somebody who doesn't? Leave it in the comments below and let me know. If you don't have this in place right now, what questions do you have about it and implement this whole process? Leave a comment below. The cool thing is, like, we've been implementing this 7 11 4 strategy for years uh, without even really realizing it. So now that they put it into. Uh, a, a framework and a term it makes it even more makes it actually makes even more sense so go ahead and implement this again comment below let me know your questions um, or insights that you have if you already implement this and i'll see you in the next video by the way if you want to leverage if you want to learn how to get more leads you want to get more clients uh, you want to learn run, run profitable ad campaigns we're going to have some um, description you're going to have some cool resources for you in the description below this video of course subscribe so we'll let you know when the next videos come out and also if you want this document so you can print it out share it with your team um, and have it on your desk or whatever. I have a link to that, to that in the description section um, as well. All right, I'll see you in the next video.